Hello, I'm Don Mitchell. Welcome back to Disciple, the book that gives you 60 experiences of drawing closer to God, knowing him better, and fulfilling more of the calling he has on your life, a calling that was set long before the world was created. Aren't you interested in doing that? Here you're at the right place. We continue today in part two, Live the Gospel, Following the Directions and Commands of Jesus. And in doing so, we're going to be in uh, week three, and we're going to be looking at the third lesson that week, which is to love God with all of your mind. All right. So as we do, let's again uh, read uh, a verse from Mark 12, verses 28 through 31 in the New King James Version. Then one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, what is the first commandment of all? Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first commandment. And the second, like it, is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. What a blessing it is to hear these wonderful words from Jesus. In adding the concept of mind here, we need to remember that knowledge of 21st century neurology and psychology were not then understood by Jesus' hearers. Instead, these listeners would have probably equated mind to the thinking of a person. Because of having total sacrificial love for God, such a hearer might imagine that the influence of this love would adjust a believer's thoughts and ideas to reflect his perspective, as expressed by today's Bible. Once again, let me remind you that the four that included elements in Mark 12, 30, heart, soul, mind, and strength, are cumulative rather than individual. That's the apparent purpose of having them listed as they are in the verse. Let me give you an example of what such total commitment could look like. Let's imagine you regularly do grocery shopping for your family. Normally, your thoughts about this activity might focus on checking the cupboard and refrigerator to see what items need to be replenished, looking for coupons to cut costs, and planning the time to go that would shorten the task's duration. I'm sure you've done such or similar thinking actions on many occasions. If your thinking were instead totally devoted to loving and serving God, you would first focus on how you might expand and improve God's kingdom by your grocery shopping. With such a focus, you might consider what you could buy to share with a neighbor you were witnessing to, how you might acquire and then contribute some food and household supplies to the needy, and how you might create opportunities to share your testimony with those who will be present while you shop. Do you see the difference? In the first instance, you're only thinking about what to do in terms of your own self-interest and efficiency. In the second case, you were letting all of your self-interest take a backseat to serving God's kingdom as you planned what to do. If you apply this kind of thinking to whatever you do, I'm sure you'll soon see that your priorities will undergo a big change, and you'll be engaging in many new activities while you perform your usual ones. For instance, at work, you'll probably do more to set a good example and be kind to one and all rather than trying so hard to impress the boss to earn a promotion and receive a higher income. If you did happen to receive a higher income, for example, you would probably then think about how you could use the added funds to advance God's purposes, rather than planning to use all the increase to benefit yourself and your family, such as by buying a nicer house to live in and a fancier vehicle to drive by yourself. Be sure to apply such a changed perspective to all aspects of your thinking and deciding. So, uh, Romans 12, uh, verses 1 and 2, in the New King James Version, has good directions for what is required. Quote, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So here are some questions designed to help you engage in such a total mental renewal based on having sacrificial love for God. 
First, have you kept a record lately of how you spend all your daily time? If you haven't, please do so beginning today. After you've been keeping track of your ways of spending time for at least a week, look at your record and ask, in which of these activities did my thinking cause me to put God's purposes first in how I engaged in what I did? And third, uh, for any activities where you did not put God's purposes first, ask, how do I need to change how I plan and perform my activities to always put God's purposes first? Where you are unsure of what God's purposes are for such an activity, ask God, what do you want me to do while I'm engaging in such an activity? Do Fifth, daily record your record of how well you put God's purposes first in your thinking and planning for each activity. Ask God then, how did I do today? And what must I do differently tomorrow to overcome any places where I put my needs ahead of your purposes? Six, how do you experience life differently now that you're putting God first in your thinking? And seventh, how can you continue to shift your thinking in these ways? So I hope this lesson has blessed you. And this has been a wonderful experience and just a beginning of many more to come. So goodbye for now and take care. Thanks for listening.